Hey YouTube, Bearded Bristol is back, and I'm just a guy who likes to talk and likes to paint. Uh, in my first painting video, I uh, did a lot with water on the old watercolor, um, spraying it down and making sure that the paint spread out onto the paper, uh, causing a, a soft blending and such. And uh, tonight we're going to be doing something a little more precision, actually a lot more precision um, and this is this is where I really excel I guess would be the right word for it uh, my strong suit as it were uh, but before I get started just gonna show you for those of you who are not in the artistic world uh, for this particular piece which is about 8 by 10 um, I'm using three brushes and each of these artist brushes have a number on them uh, that differentiates brush size and my art teacher my art professor in college always used to mock me because zero was my favorite brush and uh, as you can see pretty fine tip on that guy uh, you can get very precise lines with it even on uh, papers that absorb a lot of water and make it want to spread. Uh, so this is this is kind of my go-to, at least uh, it will be for tonight. But the others that I've been using on this piece are a number four. And this guy, which I'm just learning about really, um, number 12. And you can see, obviously, this one much wider, much larger than the zero tip. Um, ironically, uh, the numbers on brushes don't really signify anything in terms of physical dimensions or anything like that. It's just simply zero is smaller, 12 much bigger. So anyway, we're going to dive in here. Um, I've done a little work since the last video on this piece, and as, as per last time, I've mixed up some color um, in advance. But uh, I'm getting ready here to dive into putting together uh, some of the dead twigs and whatnot. And so, you know, don't need the uh, spray bottle because, again, I'm trying to get very precise straight lines, um, sharp edge lines on this one. So instead, we're just using this little tiny uh, dripper, dropper for water. Um, and again, I've already got kind of my palette mixed up, so here's where we put the uh, brush to the paper. And I'm likely to be a little quieter on this one than I was, say, last time because of the precision, um, the concentration needed for the old straight line uh, production. And I do have some light lines that have been sketched out on the paper here already. So at least I kind of have a guide for where I'm going. Um, hopefully the color is coming through okay on the video. Uh, you're probably noticing that this is actually a little bit red uh, that I'm putting down here first. Similar to last video, uh, wanting to work lighter to darker. Uh, so I'm putting down kind of the highlights to these uh, dead twigs first. Uh, but there is still some reddish hue in these, which is kind of fun and a little bit unexpected. But, uh, you know, it was nearing sunset, so some of this is uh, light from the sun. But at the same time, there is still uh, some life going out of these weeds. And so that leaves a little bit of a reddish hue behind. But it's fun because that gives just a little bit of additional um, depth to, to, these, uh, to these weeds. And it's going to make them pop off the page even a little more. And there we go. Um, 
again, I am I am a slow painter. Not everything in, you know, we, we get spoiled by these time-lapse videos and it appears, first of all, that things are happening much quicker than they are um, when some of those time-lapse videos may actually take days, um, you know, for us as consumers of the videos, our attention span doesn't care for that a whole lot. And the time lapse, they, they are very fun to watch. Um, I had considered doing a couple of time lapse videos, but again, with the, the rate at which I paint and the availability of time for doing that, um, probably not, not the best use of my time or resources. But as I noted, you know, I am a kind of precision painter when the rubber hits the road. Um, you know, there's obviously all sorts of different styles out there from your expressionism and your abstract and, and uh, you know, some very gestural things out there, which is great, uh, just not really my taste. Um, I like being able to take a photograph and you know still be able to add my own spin to it and make it mine in its own way um, but I, I do really enjoy it when the piece has that kind of photorealistic um, end to it and uh, you know I, I get compliments from people that assume a photo or a, a a picture that I have painted is actually a photo. And, uh, you know, that may not be your speed, and I get that. It's okay, that's why, you know, when you go into a museum, it's not just one wing of all of the same artwork. And you can see now, we're branching out, I'm making these, haha, branching out, um, making these a little bit wider now the uh, twigs I'm not sure what to call these are they weeds are they twigs they're they're dead plants you know I mean it's it's they're weeds um, for all intents and purposes uh, growing in a in a ditch on the roadside but uh, adding you know now going back with a darker kind of brown gray um, and adding some shadow to this first weed and uh, probably I will end up going back another two or three times similar to what I did last time with the you know with the blue shadowing um, to make sure I get the right depth of color uh, so that this piece uh, goes the direction that I want it to go. But speaking of shadows, um, kind of kind of interesting, you know, I think when we're kids, uh, we are just kind of trained um, due to lack of experience, worldly experience and such. Uh, we just make an assumption that shadows are black or that they are shades of gray and uh, you know when you when you really start to examine a shadow or a photo that contains shadows uh, you start to see a whole depth of color there that you probably hadn't noticed before um, similar to what I had noted about the uh, red being in this particular uh, this particular twig here um, there's actually quite a little red we're going to cover most of that up um, but that's a color you wouldn't necessarily expect to see but when you have a shadow on something that's partially red that changes the makeup of that shadow so that now you know you get instead of uh, black or whatnot you get really dark 
um, burgundy and brown hues in that shadow. So it's not just as simple as throw some black on there and make it, you know, make it look like it has that depth. And when it's all said and done, you know, this parts of this will look very photorealistic, but uh, it, it will still have my own spin on it, which means the colors are not going to be, you know, as photorealistic or as um, identical to the photo. In some ways, they're going to have a bigger pop. <clears throat> In other ways, they're not going to pop as much, just depending on where I want the focus to be on the painting. <clears throat> and hopefully there you can start to see um, the depth start to come out on this and it, it should start to have a bit of a three-dimensional quality to it. That's the goal anyway. And you know, as a high school kid, um, even on into college, um, actually pretty much all the way through college and beyond, I was a perfectionist. Um, maybe the worst kind of perfectionist uh, because I passed up on some opportunities. I missed out on trying some new things because I recognized it wasn't a strong suit for me and I was never going to attain uh, perfection, as it were. Um, and that is also in part, I think, why I gave up on art for such a period of my life was uh, being a graphic artist, having a computer um, at my disposal, I was able to do a lot of precision, uh, perfection-esque work because you could get precise dimensions. You could type in the numbers and boom, you could get that ever elusive straight line because a computer was drawing it. And uh, art, you know, is a whole other bag when it comes to that stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I being a realist uh, painter, I think... When, when I faced some adversity with the craft and wasn't able to get it perfect, I, I started actually just kind of giving up on it. And, uh, you know, I would never encourage anyone to give up on something they enjoy or something they are good at. But at the same time, that's, that's seemingly what I was doing. And I just don't think... At the age of 21, I was able to process that. And, uh, you know, I'm glad now, being an adult, that I've rediscovered this and uh, that I don't have the same marriage to perfection that I once did. Um, I now, you know, embrace the fact that within art, you can't truly have perfection. And that it's not even desirable to have that. Um, you know, if you wanted to to look at it this way, the photograph, the original photograph itself, would be the perfection um, because it has those those precision aspects to it because it's an exact reflection of what the camera sees. And it's actually the imperfections within the art that make it art. Um, the fact that you can make mistakes and still convey the feelings or the emotions or the imagery that you had intended um, is what, you know, that's, that's what makes it art. And truthfully, you know, your your master painters, I think, would would agree that they never perfected a piece. I have yet to meet an artist 
who has ever truly finished a piece. Uh, you know, at, at some point, you look at it and you say, you know, this is pretty good, or I can be happy with this result. Um, but you could forever return to that same piece and make an adjustment here and try to fix something there, uh, you know, and, and, and drive yourself mad. Um, which takes me back to my, my original point of, you know, me being a perfectionist and actually having to kind of break myself of that uh, was really a turning point for me you know, from, from probably a human developmental standpoint as well. And one little tiny dead leaf on the end of that twig. And you can see now why I enjoy using that zero size brush, because uh, otherwise I am not going to be able to make that line, that little leaf, up here. Um, and hopefully tonight my head is not getting in the way. Uh, not from an ego standpoint, mind you. I did notice on the previous video that I had a problem sticking my giant cranium into the view of the camera, so for that I apologize. Also, no Zep bottle this time. Uh, I've given them enough free advertising for one week, but, uh, you know, nobody's perfect, right? I think that's the the lesson of the day and uh, once again I do have the timer set so as to keep this uh, from getting out of control once I start painting the inclination is to continue down that road until I can't take it anymore or until I have achieved the goal I was after for the evening um, but you don't need to sit and watch all of that with me. Oh, and there's our first little boo-boo, but ironically, you can kind of see a pencil mark here. There's another twig that's actually going to cover that where I have too much water and it's starting to bleed. So every now and then you get a little bit lucky and that's a little bit, that's probably a lot lucky. And you can see we're just continuing to kind of layer colors here and to try to build out the depth on this. Give it that additional dimension. And it's also fun for me to see, uh, you know, all of the different layers, even within this twig. All of the crooks and all of the areas where the, the little branch outs occur. And the little... Uh, little seed pods and such, um, the knuckles that appear. So rather than this just being a very straight up and down or even a little bit of a crooked twig, there's a lot of character um, within each and every one of these. And that gives, it, uh, gives me something else to keep me engaged within the painting and hopefully to keep you as the viewer uh, engaged within the painting as well. And that is coming towards the end here for this particular weed. But as I said, you never truly finish. And as I say that, my alarm beeps. So I believe 
it's time to put down the brush. Uh, it's almost like a timed test, isn't it? Uh, waiting for that timer to go off, knowing you have not finished the final question yet. Fortunately, I am the only one doing the official grading on this, so if I want extra time on the test, doggone it, I'm going to take it. Um, and I'm just going to put another little finishing touch on this. And just for fun, we'll, we'll add another little little kind of leafy thing to the end of this guy. Give it some depth that the photo didn't even have. And we'll call that good for now. <clears throat> Much more painting to come for this guy. A little bit of scotch, yes. And uh, yeah, precision and perfection are two entirely different things. You, you can be precise. Uh, you can strive for that precision, but uh, striving for per perfection even is okay as long as you are keenly aware that perfection in and of itself is unobtainable. Uh, we, we, can, we can come close, uh, but we never truly will achieve it. So from that standpoint, understand what well enough is. Uh, putting in the effort making sure that you've given it your best shot and done the things that you can do to make it better is where it all stands out in the end. And that's when you can shut it off and feel good about yourself and other people can feel good about what you have done. Um, as if, if they know you've done all that you could do to make it the best that you can. And that applies to work, that applies to home life, relationships, hobbies, you know, uh, just just give it your best and uh, it's all going to work out better in the end than you would have expected, especially if you didn't give it your best effort. Anyway, I'm going to continue painting, but uh, go out there and create something. We'll see you again soon.